right now on 11 at 11, the Salvation Army closed tonight after a transformer explosion knocked out heat to the shelter for hours. What will happen to hundreds of people depending on it for food and shelter? Plus, a stunning development in the case of a missing Lexington man who worked at the University of Kentucky. The details adding a gruesome twist to the disappearance. Plus, spin out side offs and wide out conditions. Tonight, one local county is saying do not drive unless it's an emergency. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Chelsea Rabadou. Louisville's homeless community is down a white flag shelter tonight after a blown transformer knocked out the heat inside the Salvation Army. It caused the shelter to turn away hundreds of people looking for a meal and a warm place to stay. 11 at 11's Brooke Hash joins us live from the Salvation Army. Now, Brooke, does the shelter expect to be closed for too long? Well, Chelsea, we have some good news to tell you tonight. As of about an hour ago, we got word that the heat has kicked on back behind me at the Salvation Army. Now, electric crews were on site for much of the evening working on the transformer there to the right of your screen, taking a look at how big of a problem this was. But they were able to fix it. But due to the late hour, the shelter will remain closed until tomorrow morning. In a place where every seat would be filled during the dinner hour, these chairs remained vacant. The temperature inside the Salvation Army's cafeteria quickly began to drop after a transformer blew just outside the building, knocking out heat to all inside the shelter. You're talking about about 125 beds in all. Uh, that we have nobody in tonight as a result. Salvation Army staff decided to relocate those who wish to stay warm at other facilities, including Wayside Christian Mission. Uh, they have some capacity to help with shelter, with feeding. Their white flag area is open. We've been, even provided extra mattresses uh, to Wayside to help uh, alleviate some of the, uh, the load that's going to certainly fall on them tonight. However, some families who live within the Salvation Army's transitional housing decided to stay and were provided with extra blankets, which coincidentally took place on the very night hundreds of U of L students planned to donate more than 2,000 blankets to the organization. There's no snow days for the homeless, uh, and we don't feel that there should be a snow day for this event necessarily. And I think students really rallied behind that, understanding the fact that these blankets are gonna be used immediately, uh, which is really powerful. An event months in the making. The second annual Wrap Up America took place inside the gym where multiple Greek communities and the Baptist campus ministry took part in contests to see who could build the better fort with the blankets they collected. Well, and then when we found that the heat was out at the facility, um, they're going right upstairs and that's so special. Providing extra warmth to those who need it most. Again, the Salvation Army shelter here in Louisville will be closed for the remainder of the night, but back open with business as usual, starting for the breakfast rush during the 6 o'clock hour. Live at Salvation Army, Brooke Hash, 11 at 11. Thank you so much, Brooke. Well, next at 11, a developing story. The body of a Lexington man who's been missing more than a month has been found in the Kentucky River. Our sister station in Lexington reports that police and fire crews found 32-year-old Alex Johnson's remains inside a barrel near Clay's Ferry. The Fayette County coroner says he died of blunt force trauma to the head and that he believes Johnson's body had been in the barrel for about a month. Johnson worked as a chef at the University of Kentucky and disappeared on December 20th after telling his girlfriend over the phone to hold on while he answered the door. This week, two men were charged in connection to Johnson's disappearance. Right now, a travel advisory in effect for Jefferson County, Indiana. Only emergency responders and motorists who absolutely need to be out can be on the roads. Anyone else found driving will be cited. Road conditions deteriorated after several inches of snow fell in the area this morning. Our cameras caught a number of spin-offs in southern Indiana. In the bluegrass, almost 60 trucks from the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet hit the road at around 5 in the morning to start treating the roads. Had to keep up that effort for several hours because we had heavy snow coming down as well as snow from previous events blowing and drifting out onto the roadway. Uh, folks have been working a lot of overtime pretty much around the clock for the last 10 days or so. So our city team's doing a good job. Uh, they're getting out, hitting every area they can, so we just ask people to be patient. 
According to Metro Safe, between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. when the snow was falling, they received 777 total calls. That's almost 200 more than they got during the same time period last Saturday. During that six hour span, Metro Safe says they responded to 18 injury accidents, 24 non injury accidents, and 43 reports of stranded motorists. Now, Mayor Fisher says this is the 11th snow event of the year and has exhausted the city's overtime budget for snow removal. But the city of Louisville is having a good year economically speaking, so he says it will be able to handle any additional costs for snow removal. And we want to see your photos of the snow. Terry Kramer showed us what it looked like in Elk Creek near Taylorsville, Kentucky. We've also received several photos of children playing in the snow. This one comes from Hannah in Shelbyville. Send your own to your photos at whas11.com. We'll put all of them on our website. Just visit whas11.com for a slideshow. And we also have a list of church and business closings on our homepage. And now for a check of your forecast with meteorologist Kristen Walls. More snow on the way at the beginning of the week, but first we get a break with a beautiful Sunday in store for tomorrow. Yeah, Chelsea, it looks like temperatures for tomorrow will be even warmer than today in just a few minutes. About ready to be done with those Arctic blasts. Thank you so much, Kristen. An 18-year-old is recovering from a gunshot wound after a shooting in the middle of the day. Louisville Metro Police tell us just before noon the teen got into a fight at a home in the 2700 block of Magazine Street when the attacker shot the victim in the shoulder. The teen is expected to survive, and right now there are no suspects. An update to a story we first told you about at 630. A woman in the hospital after a two car collision in Clarksville. It happened just before five o'clock on Green Tree Boulevard, close to the Green Tree Mall. The accident was originally reported as a pedestrian struck because a woman inside one of the cars got out of the vehicle and began screaming. She was checked out for minor injuries. No word on what caused the crash, but there was ice covering the roadway near the accident site. Conflicting emotions from the family of a woman and two children who were murdered inside their home the day after their alleged killer is sentenced to life in prison. Friday, John Devine Sr. took a plea deal. He was accused of breaking into his ex-girlfriend Sade Goldsmith's PRP home in July 2012 and then killing her and their two sons, six-year-old John Jr. and five-year-old John T. A family spokesperson describes how Goldsmith's mother reacted to the news of Devine's sentence made her as sick as when she got the news in 2012 that her daughter's life was taken and her grandson's lives were taken. It equally it almost replanted the day she got the news. We're told Goldsmith's mother became so ill after yesterday's events she needed medical attention and that she was torn about whether she wanted Divine to receive the death penalty or life behind bars. Goldsmith's mother believes the murders stemmed from escalating domestic violence and we're told she will devote her time to combating these kinds of crimes once she's well. Doctors from the ASPCA spent today evaluating dogs rescued from a southern Kentucky puppy mill earlier this week. The 43 dogs range from chihuahuas to bloodhounds to Boston Terriers and were found in deplorable conditions at Dreamcatcher's Kennel. They're now being treated at the Kentucky Humane Society in Louisville. The doctors have found the dogs have a range of medical and social problems. We're seeing dogs who are afraid to be reached toward. Um, they obviously haven't had as much human contact as we would um, like our companion animals to have. They've never walked on a leash. It's clear that they panic and, and are afraid to be on a leash. After they have been uh, fully examined for, for health and behavior, then the Kentucky Humane Society will be stepping in and taking over the medical care and the uh, behavior care as well to make sure that they have uh, their, that their behavioral needs are met. We've received numerous inquir inquiries from viewers interested in adopting these dogs, but the Humane Society says they're just not ready for adoption just yet. New tonight, the reward for information about the shooting death of a pair of Western Kentucky whooping cranes has more than doubled. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service says more than $15,000 is up for grabs. Uh, up from $7,200 last week. The service says it believes the two cranes were shot at around the same time in November near the Pond River in Hopkins County. One bird eventually had to be euthanized. Hoofing cranes are protected under federal law. Anyone with information is asked to call 582-5989 extension 29 or toll free at 1-800-252-5378. More local news, Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher was on hand to help kick off a new library program that challenges kids to read 1,000 books before entering kindergarten. This is a great book because it really says it all just by the title. If the title of this book is Reading Makes You Feel Good. 
Mayor Fisher says it's essential that children are prepared to learn from an early age. Research has shown that only a third of kindergartners enter, entering Jefferson County Public Schools come equipped with basic learning skills. The library's challenge is meant to encourage parents and caretakers to read with their children. They say taking 15 minutes per day to read three picture books will translate into 1,000 books read in a year. You can pick up a reading log at any Louisville Free Public Library location. Each time your child reaches a milestone, they'll receive a prize. We have more information on our website, whas11.com. Gunfire erupts inside a busy mall, leaving shoppers running for their lives. Some forced to hide out in fitting rooms. What we're learning about the two victims and the suspect believed to be dead. Plus, cats versus dogs in Rep Arena. Kentucky squares off against Georgia. Report from Lexington later in sports. And it looks like we'll have one day with some of those warmer temperatures moving in in the mid-40s, but looking for more snow chances and then bitterly cold temperatures returning for the start of the work week. I'll have all the details with Futurecast after the break. Police still trying to figure out why a gunman opened fire at a shopping mall in suburban Maryland, killing two people who worked there and then apparently turning the gun on himself. The terrifying situation left customers and employees alike fleeing for their lives. ABC's Chuck Sievertson has the latest. It was just before lunchtime at this mall, a half hour's drive from Washington, D.C. There were a lot of people here at the Columbia Mall uh, Saturday morning at 1115. This was a very scary incident. Gunshots rang out. Boom, and then followed by uh, four or five more. Boom, boom, boom. People were screaming, running and scrambling for cover. My manager yelled, everyone get in the back, in the back. SWAT teams responded within two minutes of getting a 911 call. They safely directed people into a parking lot, some of them in tears as they returned to their cars or boarded buses. People were running either straight down the mall corridor or just running into stores. And I, I didn't know how safe it would be to just keep running in the open. Police found three people dead on the upper level. They identified the victims as 21-year-old Brianna Bilolo and 25-year-old Tyler Johnson, both of Maryland. The third body is believed to be that of the shooter. When our officers approached, um, he was obviously deceased, but he was also still um, had, a, had a large amount of ammunition still on and about him. Because of concerns about weapons and the possibility of explosives, police proceeded with caution. Authorities are still working to verify the suspect's identity and his motive for killing the two skateboard shop employees. After a thorough search, authorities gave the mall an all clear, but it remained closed the rest of the day. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. Five other people were hurt in the shooting. Officials say they've all been treated and released from area hospitals. Today, rescuers continued searching through the wreckage of this elderly community in Quebec, destroyed by fire earlier this week. The official death toll remains at 10, but another 22 people are still unaccounted for tonight. The three-story building caught fire on Thursday. Fire crews had to deal with frigid temperatures, which froze the water they were using to fight the blaze. A special mass is planned for tomorrow and for survivors and relatives to remember their loved ones. A deadly day in Egypt as the country marked the third anniversary of the political uprising that would later force its president from power. A government spokesperson says at least 29 people were killed today during clashes between security forces and anti-government protesters. More than 160 others were hurt. Police arrested dozens of members of the Muslim Brotherhood, the political group that came into power after the ousting of former President Hosni Mubarak. The Muslim Brotherhood-led government uh, was removed from power itself last year. The White House is condemning today's violence. Ongoing unrest and cycles of violence surrounding protests hurt Egypt's prospects for political and economic stability. Complicating matters for Washington is news of an American citizen who has not been heard from since being detained by Egyptian police on Wednesday. 26-year-old Jeremy Hodge's family says he was working as a translator. The U.S. Embassy in, uh, in Cairo says they're aware of Hodge's situation but won't comment further. And now for another check of the weather with meteorologist Kristen Walls. More snow on the way for the early part of the work week, and you're tracking its path with Futurecast. Yeah, Chelsea, it looks like as we head into the early part of the day on Monday, may see a little bit of light snow. No snow by the end of the work week. We just have to hold on through the frigid yes. colder. And thanks so much, Kristen. The Kentucky Wildcats were impressive in their win today. Kent Spencer will report from Lexington. 
And Tiger Woods will not be playing in tomorrow's final round out in California. We'll explain in sports next. Well, it was never in doubt as the Kentucky Wildcats rolled over Georgia this afternoon over in Rupp Arena, their home opener February 21st. That's it for sports. We're back in a moment. And it looks like we're going to warm up to 45 degrees for your high tomorrow. It's going to start off chilly. Temperatures will start off in the teens. A chance for a little bit of light snow, maybe a few snow flurries around for Monday morning. Shouldn't really amount to much, but maybe have a few, may have a few slick spots out there for Monday morning's commute, then dropping into the teens. So once again, we'll have to deal with more frigid weather, but we'll be back up in the 30s and 40s by the end of next week. Holding on for next weekend. All right, thanks so much, Kristen. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow morning for Good Morning, Kentuckiana.